Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Roadside Reviews. This is episode five and my name is John Siebers with World Car Kia and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the all new mid-size Kia Optima. It's not an Optima anymore. This is now the new Kia K5. This is gonna be the replacement for the Optima and they have done a complete redesign from the ground up on this car and it looks absolutely amazing. Now there are certain trim levels that you get with this vehicle and this is the EX which is going to be our fully loaded version in the typical roadside reviews we like to be able to review the nicest ones first. And the first thing that you're going to notice when you look at this car is this aggressive front end which is going to be the new standard for the Kia lineup. What they call the tiger face. Nice thin lines lead seamlessly into the LED turn signals and headlamps and also an industry first amber LED turn signals and marker lights as well. So you can see that you do have the nice pyramid display through the grill, which is gonna complement almost all the way out to the side of the headlamps, front air dams and side fascias as well, really add to that aggressive look. Everything's seamless, everything looks like it's supposed to be there, almost sinister looking, really adding to the sporty look of this vehicle. Coming up over here to the side as well, you can be able to see that you do have your 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels with the machine finish, but you do have quite an interesting design. It is a five star pattern, but you can see all the grooves and two tone sets that they have and they're really setting it apart from what you'd see in a traditional rim. Now this does ride on the Pirelli P0s, which is the all season, all weather tire, phenomenal ride quality, reduces a lot of noise while inside the cabin. But if you wanna drive a little bit more aggressively, this tire can be able to handle it too. Does very well under aggressive driving. So if you're going through corners in the hill country, this is gonna keep you firmly planted on the ground. Coming around over to the other side, you can see everything that they went with the Kia for a nice monotone look. Everything from your side mirrors to your door handles. All the way up from this chrome strip, you see that leads all the way up over through the top of your windows down into the rear trunk lid, almost giving the roof a floating look like it's almost not connected. Very streamlined, very sporty, something that you'd see in like a GT Grand Touring wagon, but still keeping the sedan-like features as well. Coming over to the back, just the same that you would see with the front design, completely redesigned into the rear. You have LED tail lights that are gonna stretch from one side to the other, fully across the rear trunk lid. Your Kia badge located right up on top. You do have your rear backup camera here. And then the EX designating the badge or the uh, trim level that you have, and then the new K5 emblems as well. Now, getting into the trunk, it's fairly simple. A couple different ways from outside the vehicle, inside the vehicle, or from the key clicker itself. And then talk about storage space. Once again, something that you'd see on a smaller to mid-size SUV, you can be able to get into the back of this trunk. Everything from luggages camping equipment if you want to go out to the lake and camp on you know for uh, underneath the stars or just being able to haul around town and all the soccer bags and stuff that the kids may need all your spare tire and equipment are still going to be located into the rear you do have a space saver tire which is going to be nice because a it saves space b cuts down on weight c kind of emphasizes that you get your currently damaged wheel and tire fixed as well so the last thing you want to do is have a matching rim and tire that go to the car and then you drive around on that and forget and then get a flat tire again and then you have no spare tire whatsoever. You do have a 60-40 split folding rear seat to be able to accommodate for a little bit more room. So in the event that you have something a little bit longer than you know what would be able to fit into the trunk, you can lay down one side or both at the same time and have space all the way up to the front seats as well. So a lot of customization but a lot of utility built into a sedan. Something that you really, you know, don't see in a lot of cars these days. Now, along with the backup camera, you do also have your rear sensors too. So you have four of them located into the rear. These sonar sensors are gonna give you an audible tone about how close you're getting to an object. So if it's something that you can't see off a camera, those are gonna be able to pick up, such as a small object located right underneath the rear bumper or anything from trees or plants or people walking by as well. Coming over here to the driver's side, you do also have the touchless key entry system so and this is a really cool part i love the kia keys because most of them you know the traditional ones you just have your lock unlock features look at this thing it almost looks like a detonator you know 
something you have to be able to hold in your hand like this and be able to hit the button, you know, to set off an explosion. But you can see you have your lock, your unlock, your trunk pop, your panic button, and over here on the side, your hold for your auto start. So to be able to go ahead and start the vehicle, hit your lock button once, then press and hold. Now the vehicle's running. With a lot of the typical auto starts you have where it, is, it has automatic climate control, it's going to uh, have sensors that are going to tell the outside temperature as well as the inside temperature in the car. If it's super hot outside, it's going to blow the AC as hard and as quickly as it can to be able to make sure it cools down the vehicle. Also works in the winter time that if it's 50 degrees outside and it's 45 degrees inside your vehicle, then it's going to kick on the heater and warm up the vehicle. The idea is if it's 120 degrees inside your car, it tries to get it down to 80 degrees as quickly as possible. If it's 40 degrees inside your car, it's going to kick on the heater and try to be able to get to 80 degrees. That's its key target number that it wants to be able to get to. Now, when we take a look at the inside of the Kia, complete redesign as well. And this is much more of the driver's car. You can see everything just like we were talking about, the detonator style key that you have, almost like a fighter style cockpit as far as everything is really geared towards driver comfort and ease, but also how everything's laid out. Starting over here at the driver door, very similar. You have your power windows, door locks, mirror controls. You have window locks as well. Nice little storage compartments down underneath. And then also you can see at the very front, you do also have a water bottle holder for, let's say, a uh, Yeti cup or an Ozarka bottle. You have space for that as well. You do have this nice wood finish right here that goes along and it almost represents like an open pour. So it's not gonna be something soft or slick. It adds a lot of depth and a very luxurious feel and look to the interior of the vehicle. That's something like I said that you'd see on a much higher and much more expensive vehicle along with your piano black finish throughout the whole console and doors of the car. Now you do have the eight way power driver seat with power lumbar support for the driver. And you also have leather seats that are perforated and your front two seats are going to be heated and cooled as well. You hear that? That thud? Now that tinny noise that you get from other cars? That just really kind of goes to tell you about the amount of sound insulating materials that they put in, but also the craftsmanship. Nice, solid feel when opening and closing doors, which will tell a lot about how the vehicle's made. Now let's go ahead and get this thing started. Once again, it is a push button ignition. So all you have to do is just have the key inside the vehicle, foot on the brake, hit the button once. Now the vehicle starts. Just as easy as can be, nothing too special there. Everything from all your driver aids, such as your lane, keep assist, traction control, trunk pop, and even your display uh, brightness is gonna be located right here next to the driver knee, along with your hood release as well. And then coming over here, you can be able to see that on all your gauges and uh, your clusters, they're all gonna be analog gauges. Even the coloring that they use from the softer white to the red are all gonna be able to help make sure that it can be seen, especially during nighttime, but also help prevent with eye fatigue. I know that sounds kind of weird, but having these specific colors, especially if you're driving at night, are not going to be able to strain on your eyes. So if you're going on a longer road trip or just been on the road, it's been a long day at work, you just can't wait to be able to get home, that's the last thing you have to worry about is having eye strain. Everything from your RPMs, your speedometer, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, those are your analogs. Up here in the center display, you can be able to see it'll be able to tell you which gear you're in, how many miles you can be able to drive until it's empty, your outside temperature, 73 degrees down here in South Texas, and then of course, 58 miles on the car. Steering wheel, very well laid out. Nice, thick leather steering wheel, good grip, nice placement for your hands. Everything from your windshield wipers to your headlights, right within fingertips reach. Once again, they don't stick out past the steering wheel, so there's no way that you'd be able to accidentally be able to bump those and add any distractions while pulling into a parking spot or going around a corner whatsoever. In keeping with the typical Kia fashion, you have your voice recognition and all your controls for your stereo here on your left side, and then all your cruise control and then information for your onboard computer located right here on your right side. So voice recognition is going to be working with your Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, or Bluetooth uh, if you have your phone already paired to it, or the voice recognition on the uh, satellite radio and navigation. Be able to flip through different modes, so if you're looking for AM, FM, Bluetooth, if you have your phones already plugged into it, be able to switch to that platform as well. 
and of course, you know, audio controls as far as the radio, you know, as far as how the uh, actual volume, and then flipping between tracks. And then these two bottoms right here are going to be for answering calls, declining calls, or simply being able to give the computer a prompt to be able to follow. You know, over here you can be able to see that you look like you have a little icon that has paper shuffling. This is going to go through your onboard computer for everything else that you would need, such as your fuel economy, average fuel economy, how far you can be able to drive, if there's any warnings that go along with it as well. So like, let's say that you have a low tire, you're low on fuel, anything like that. Those are all going to display through there. Now we talked about kind of that open pour wood look, falls all the way through with the dash, complemented with this black piano finish, and then this stainless brushed aluminum look down here. Having these three different colors and tones really add just a level of sophistication that you really wouldn't expect for a car in this price point, but how well everything's laid out. And remember what we talked about that this is something that's more of a driver's car. Everything from your dash display to lay out the steering wheel, and you can see everything slightly tilted towards the driver, making it easier for the driver then to be able to access. Now we start up over here on the top. Power sliding panoramic sunroof. Man, that is quick. So once again, all passengers have a view out. Let's time that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just over six seconds to be able to open and close. And then that window up in the center does go up and over too, so you can actually be able to have an open sunroof as well. Everything from your Uvo, which is going to be your voice command, is all going to be located right up here. And now coming down here to your uh, onboard computer and information display, everything from your radio to your different media imports to all your seek and track, all that's going to be located right here up into the front. If you have Apple CarPlay, you can be able to plug your phone into it and be able to display all your menus through your phone on top of that as well. And the one thing I love, knobs. Actual volume knobs and then be able to turn on and off. And be able to seek and tune and select from this point as well. Coming down, you do have the automatic climate control and it is dual zone. So driver and passenger can be able to set their different temperatures. So right now it's synced up. So whatever the driver has it set at, the passenger AC vents will then follow. But if you want to be able to change that, the passenger wants a little bit of a higher temperature, it'll be able to blow the right side of the air vents at that, while the left side will still maintain what the driver has. The automatic comes into play is it'll take where the air is supposed to go and at what speed to make sure it'll maintain those temperatures the best that it can throughout the cabin of the vehicle. Getting back to that whole cabin focus, is almost like a cockpit. Everything from your switches here for your air conditioning, for your rear defroster to fan controls, these nice switches, very easy. They're just nice clicks too, very solid, very well built. Once again, you can tell the craftsmanship when you're looking through at this vehicle. Coming down here, you still have your 12 volt power outlet, which is nice if you have any other different accessories to be able to plug in, you still can be able to carry that. Or even if you have another charger that has a USB, you can have three USB chargers as well. But then your two other ones that come directly with the vehicle. Coming up over here too, you'll see that you do have wireless charging for your cell phone. So it just drops right inside here into this slot and be able to charge it from there. And coming back to once again with kind of like the fighter pilot, you know, or fighter jet layout, it's going to be your seat controls for your heated and cooled seats. And now these are going to be three ways. So you have three way heated seats. So one, two, three, depending on which level you want, but also for cooling too. And now these are active cooling seats, so it is going to be forcing air through the ventilated seats to be able to make sure that it can be able to wick away any heat and moisture as quickly as possible, adding to a very comfortable ride, especially when we hit those triple digits here in South Texas. Now you do have an automatic transmission with the manual shift mode, so going from park to drive, you're ready to go. By shifting it over to the side and pushing forward, you can be able to select gears up and then select gears back down as well. Now this does have an 8-speed automatic transmission, and then this K5 is connected to the 1.6-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that you see across the platform of a lot of different Kias and also Hondas. Now this engine creates 195 horsepower and 180 foot-pounds of torque and gets over 30 miles per gallon combined on uh, between freeway and city. So not only do you have the power and the scoot to be able to get up and have fun, but also the fuel economy to be able to go along with it too. So this vehicle has no problems in the power department, and then of course the extended range that you would get with having such great fuel mileage. 
You do have an electronic parking brake, so to be able to go ahead and engage and disengage that is going to be located right here. So just be able to go ahead and push it down to release or pull it up to be able to engage it. But then also this auto hold. This is great, so if you're, part, if you're coming up on a hill, you let your foot off the brake, and when the auto hold is set into place, it's going to go ahead and apply the brakes until you hit the gas, so the vehicle won't roll backwards. So you have to worry about you know, jumping from the brake to the gas really, really quick. It gives you that time to be able to adjust and then be able to time it perfectly while keeping the vehicle in the same spot. And then, of course, an abundance of storage. You saw that this nice storage compartment we have up here, dual cup holders, a spot for your cell phone for wireless charging, and then when we open up the center console, more storage inside there along with another USB outlet as well. So you have a total of three USB outlets, one 12 volt outlet, and then also wireless charging for your cell phone. So any electronic devices you could think that you need in this car, you can very well keep them charged up. But also very conveniently located, so everything's kind of out of the way but very easy to be able to access as well. And one thing to be able to point out too is the support. These are going to be a little bit more of the sporty seats, so they have a little bit more bolsters on the side. Now that's good just for having a lot of support if you're going on a longer road trip, but if you just kind of want to whip around some corners, it's going to keep you from sliding from side to side. So not only a very comfortable seat, but very supportive seat as well, which is something, like I said, I can really appreciate because if it's your daily driver, you still want to be able to have fun and have the best of both worlds too. So what do you say we go take a look at the back? Ah, oh, the infamous big guy test. And I can say that there is more than enough room for me to be able to call this comfortable and spacious. You know, everything from, like I said, from the soft touch materials to this fine stitching, the piano black finish on the doors, follows through to the rear seats as well. That supportive feel that we got in the front seat, very much so still located into the rear. Now you do have your two additional AC vents on this model. So not only can be able to air, you know, keep the air moving from the front to the rear, but more efficiently to be able to make sure that everybody in the rear does stay cool or warm, depending on where they're set at. And then an additional two other USB outlets. So whoever's running electronics back over here, whether it be a kids with an iPad or you just want to drain out your cell phone, you know, looking at Instagram, you can be able to stay charged up and connected. Tons of storage. So right here on the back of the seats, you have storage compartments and also into the back doors. And you do have a little spot for, you know, a cell phone, you know, maybe, you know, a small tablet, then also for a water bottle. This car does seat up to five, but if you pull down this center console, seating for four, and then an additional two uh, cup holders. Now, the big thing too is, you know, when you're six foot three, 260-ish pounds, space is gonna be a big deal. And even with having the panoramic sunroof, the one place on a lot of cars you lose that, it's gonna be in the headroom. You can see that the way that they designed this to have it contoured. So even taller passengers in the back have an ample amount of headroom. So we're not keeping off to the side or just barely touching it. So I can be able to stretch my legs out, kick back, and just really be able to relax. I'd say that these seats are as comfortable, if not more comfortable than the front seats too. So this would be a perfect place to be sitting on a road trip. Whether it's, like I said, just up to Austin or if you're going to Louisiana or all the way up to, you know, Alaska, whatever it may be, this would be a great place to be sitting. Tons of space, great craftsmanship. I think the layout of the back seat is probably one of the best I've seen in a long time. So guys, I could go on for hours, be able to talk about all the new features that you'd get in the Kia K5. But these are things that you're going to expect to see through the whole Kia lineup. This is the whole new design and the way that they're wanting to be able to go. And I think that they've nailed it with this car. From the aggressive front end to the amount of features that you get, the space, the fit and finish and quality of this car. But then just, like I said, the overall aesthetics. This is a good looking car. It's sharp. It, it's different. Something that you're never going to be able to mistake in another parking lot. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you already haven't done that too, and then hit that bell so you get notifications every time that we come out with a new video. If you have any questions, comments, or any suggestions, make sure that you drop that in the comment section below. Once again, my name is John Siebers with Wool Car Kia here in beautiful San Antonio, Texas, and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Y'all take care now.